What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand the Asia scale so that you can determine your patient's needs. And also pass the NPTE. Initially, after a spinal cord injury, a patient will typically have a period of spinal shock, which can last from four weeks up to six months due to inflammation and other competing body responses. Uh, this patient will have a lot of flaccidity in their muscles, their vitals won't work right, and they'll have a lot going on that makes it really difficult to determine what level of injury they actually have. Once things have calmed down, you can start to figure out their Asia rating. A complete injury means that the spinal cord is damaged all the way through. So there's no motor, no sensory, uh, no sacral sparing at all. So nothing below that level of injury. And this is called an Asia A. An Asia B means that they have some sensory input below the level of injury. An Asia C means that they'll have some motor output below the level of injury. But most muscles are still less than a three out of five. So there's not much that can move against gravity. Asia D is similar in that they still have some motor sparing below the level of injury, but in this case, most of the muscles are able to move against gravity. And then an Asia E is normal. You can also describe a spinal cord injury by the motor level of injury, the sensory level of injury, and the overall neurological level of injury. So a motor level of injury is gonna be the lowest level in the spinal cord where the muscle is three out of five, so it can move against gravity but then the muscle above it has to be a five out of five. So that's what makes it a little bit tricky. The sensory level of injury is the lowest level with both pinprick and light touch sensation intact. And then you kind of combine those two to create the overall neurologic level of injury. So it's the lowest level that has both. So if you have a motor level of C5 and a sensory level of C6, you're gonna pick the higher one. <laughs> now with some of these incomplete injuries, you can get what's called sacral sparing, which means that the innermost part of the spinal cord is still preserved. Uh, enough so that you can get either sensory or motor all the way down to the sacral region, so S4 and 5, which is your groin area. In addition to sacral sparing, patients with incomplete spinal cord injuries can also have a zone of preservation, which is where you have areas that have motor or sensory input below the level of the spinal cord. So even if, you know, your patient is at a, a T1 level, maybe they can still wiggle their toes or have some kind of other inputs to their lower body. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy! Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. Although the wrist extensors are at C6, and thus the motor level is C6, the overall neurologic level of injury is based on the lowest level with both motor and sensory, which would have to be at C5. Hopefully that covers all of the bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy, or you can comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.